Welcome artists. How about as a great way to start off the new year, we go ahead and get all of your little financial organizational strategies in place so that bookkeeping as an independent artist will be a breeze all year long. Welcome back to The Nest, it's Kaylee Bird, and as an independent artist, I have been doing my own bookkeeping for 10 plus years now. I've been doing all my own taxes, all that kind of stuff, until actually um, 2021 is when I finally hired an accountant. So just to let you know, officially I am not doing my own taxes anymore, just because it got to the point where I had so many spinning plates that it was just like, okay, I need a professional, but I have been doing my own bookkeeping still and have been doing my own taxes, like I said before that, 10 plus years. So this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I am not a banker or an investment advisor or anything like that, but I'm just gonna tell you guys the strategies that I have been using that kept me organized and made my taxes. I would do my taxes in like psh, an hour or something every year. So I'm just gonna let you guys know how I got organized and whatever you like, by all means, feel free to follow suit. So first things first, before you can get organized, you need to figure out how you want to get organized. You kind of have two options. You can either decide to do like a bookkeeping ledger, which is essentially a book with a lot of lines and grid pattern on there where you just like write in everything under different categories, or you can do what I do and use a bookkeeping software, which I think makes it a total breeze. Like literally I spend gosh, 20 minutes or something a month kind of organizing my bookkeeping using an online bookkeeper. Like it takes no time. Once you get it all set up, it is such a breeze. The ledger is not difficult either, but it definitely takes more time and you better be good on your math because <laughs> there's no computer program. I mean, aside from whatever calculator you use to double check on things. So either way works, but I will tell you using online accounting software is so much faster. Okay, I admit I say that somewhat in jest because if you're just starting out, honestly, keeping a general ledger in like one that you buy from the store or even a notebook or an Excel spreadsheet is totally sufficient, like probably even for the first couple of years. So I'm going to show you briefly three different ways you can decide to keep a ledger as sort of, you know, a beginner artist that doesn't have too, too much going on. And FYI, if you want to study any of these images a little bit more closely, I have these images as well as four different blank ledgers you can download totally for free from the corresponding blog post on my website and I will put that link down in the description below. So for this first ledger, um, basically it's putting all of like just everything all in one. Okay. And this one you probably do month to month and you would literally just write in anytime you have like a different sort of income or a different sort of expense. And I will go over different categories of, um, incomes and expenses in just a little bit, but just for starting off, you just basically put everything on here and you would write, you know, basically if it's a sale, if it's an art sale, that would be an income. Or if it's like a wholesale or, you know, you're selling, you know, you're making money from ads on your videos or your website or whatever, that's all, you know, money in. So that's all the green numbers. And then you would write, and that's all credits. Basically credit means that it's, you know, more money in your business. Your money has, your business has more credit. And conversely, you would put all of your expenses down there and those would be categorized differently as well. Again, I'll go over that in a second, but those would be in the red. Those are charges that is negative to your business that gets taken away. So for this kind of ledger, you'd probably want to do once a month and just have everything listed out and just make sure that you write down if it's an expense or an income. And this is good for people that, you know, maybe you only have a couple of things every month and you just don't need to get that complicated with it. Now for the second style of bookkeeping, you would have all of your income on one page of your ledger and all of your expenses on another. And this way it's a little bit more separated. I kind of think this is maybe a little better than the first way. But again, if you're like super starting out, you know, just do whatever's best for you. Um, and this way you may want to do it month by month if you're having, you know, a few sales every month or a few expenses every month, or you may do it by the year. So you might inside decide to do your entire list of income on the year. Because I know some people that are just, just, just starting out, you might only sell, you know, three, four, five, six paintings in a whole year. So you might not need to do this by the month. And also with expenses, you know, if you're not selling that much, you might not be going to the art store maybe once every couple of months and, you know, 
buying one computer or something like that. So um, I think this one's a little bit better, keeping that income and expenses separate on two different pages. Um, but again, either one works pretty well for very, very, very beginner baby businesses. Now this last way is for when your business starts to kind of pick up steam and you need a bit more organization and this one is really good for paying your taxes at the end of the year or if you are even going to hire someone to do your taxes for you. This way you have just got everything right where it needs to be and in this way you're probably guessing each category of expense and each category of income has its own page in the ledger and you use this throughout the year. So each page would be used for the whole year. You might not use every page every month or some of the pages, you know, you might wind up using three or four of them, you know, hopefully on those income pages, you wind up using a whole bunch of them. Um, but this one is hyper, hyper organized, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. And certainly as my business grew, this is definitely how I was keeping my books um, up until the point that I finally jumped on the um, digital bandwagon. Now, if you decide to do digital, you have a plethora of options online. Of course, QuickBooks comes to mind. Intuit is another one. Um, I've heard of FreshBooks. Um, the one that I personally use is Wave. Now, I am not an affiliate of them. This is not an ad. I'm not getting any money or anything, but that is the program that I use. I've been using it for like six or seven years now or something. It has never cost me a dollar. There's no like premium features that you don't have access to, anything like that. I just I think this program is incredibly easy to use. I love it, so that's what I'm sticking with. So anyways, you don't necessarily have to use that program, but if you go digital, I would do a little research, maybe read some reviews, find out who likes what. Somebody who used Wave told me about it and got me on it, and I have never looked back. I think it's so great. Now, the other aspect of initial setup is you need to have separate banking and credit cards. So you need to have a separate checking account and a separate credit card in the name of your business. I mean, it can be in your name too, but it needs to be specifically in your business. And anytime you buy something for your business, I what I do is every time I buy something for my business, I buy it with that credit card and then I pay it off at the end of every month. And that way I have a very simple log of every single expense I've ever made. It's right there on this one credit card getting taken out of this one bank account. And that way, like it just does not confuse with your own personal money or if you have a second job or if you do, you know, let's say you are an artist on one hand, but also are like, you know, a housekeeper on the other. Like those are vastly different things. You do not want those things getting mixed up in tax time and all that kind of stuff. So having a completely separate bank account that is specifically for your art business is what you want to do and a credit card as well, because trust me, it just makes life so much easier. Even if you don't have a whole lot of like transactions on those and they're very small and sometimes maybe you don't even make any money that month or have any expenses that month, that's fine, whatever. It's just so much easier to keep things separate right from the start. I want to take a second just to show you Wave, and I'm sure most accounting softwares are like this, but in like your bank account and your credit card right into the software program. So all of your transactions are automatically imported, and then you will go through later on and just categorize them as they need to be. It makes it super duper simple, like I said. Once you figured out how you want to bookkeep, now you need to figure out all of your categories, okay? So you're going to have basically expenses and income, and you may have different aspects of income. Like for example, I might sell a painting, I might teach a class, I might sell an online course, you know, I might make money from ads, you know, running on my YouTube videos or something. Now for your expenses, obviously you have all kinds of expenses like your art supplies is very obvious, right? You need new paint, that kind of thing. Um, but did you know that you can also have things like your cell phone, right? And your internet, because if you're sitting here taking photos of your artwork on your phone, posting it online with your internet to try and garner new customers, well, those are things that you use for your business, right? Like, so your internet, your computer, your phone, like even some states, not all states, some states let you even do part of your rent. Like if you have studio space that is specifically set up for your art business, you can deduct for that. Like there's all kinds of expenses that turn into deductions. Essentially, when you have your list of expenses and you're doing your taxes at the end of the year, those are all of the things that you get to deduct from your income to say, well, you know, maybe I made $10,000 in my art business this year of the income I was just talking about, right? But it cost me 
$3,000 of expenses to run that business, right? So then at the end of the year, you're only going to get taxed on that $7,000 that's left because the $7,000 was really what you made because it cost you money to make that money, right? So having your expenses all listed out, very well organized is going to help you literally save money in taxes in the end of the year. So for each person, for each art business, for each state, it's always going to be different, but it is still worth it to take the time and set up properly because it'll pretty much save you money no matter where you live. Once you've integrated your bank accounts, basically it's just going to be a matter of going through and setting up all the different ways you can take money and all the different things you can spend money on. So you'll have your cash and bank You'll have your liabilities and credit cards. Basically, if your bank has a credit card, which you definitely do want to have, um, if you have loans, lines of credit, anything like that, I mean, it gets a little detailed. Most of the stuff I don't use. Um, but then income, there's all different kinds of ways you can take income, whether you are wholesaling, retailing, you know, if you're selling ads on your space, if you have online licensing deals, all that kind of stuff. So you'll want to look and see. You're welcome to pause and you know use any of my categories as references when you're setting up your own thing um, no problem there it's really easy to add any kind of account as you can see for income or expense it's just super easy to use this whole program and the last one is the expenses that's actually going to be your biggest one because you're going to want to be relatively specific about them um, later on you will see these categories pop up and be able to use them so i would say you know the more the merrier there's really not a problem with having more categories rather than less in fact i think it's easier when I'm actually sitting down to do my books, if I have more categories, because then I'm able to stay specific and consistent. Now, this is where it gets really good using the online software, because once you have your categories set up with your bank, then everything just comes through here and gets filtered. And with a good software like Wave, it'll automatically get categorized and then I can go back in and double check it. But literally, it's just as much as clicking a few buttons, maybe retyping in a description or something like that. You can also completely add in or take away either an expense or a withdrawal. It's totally up to you. Like It's a very hands-on software for however much you want it to be hands-on, but it's also nice that so much of it is automatic that you don't have to put a ton of work and effort into it. And last but not least, when it comes time for the end of the month or the end of the year, you can totally select which month or quarter or year you want to see the categories in and it will show you exactly like all of your expenses specifically for that category. Kind of like the third way of paper bookkeeping I showed you where everything is just in its own perfect little list. So like I said, this is my favorite. I would highly recommend you check out Wave. So literally the hard part, which isn't even hard, is just setting it up and integrating your bank account and all that kind of stuff. And once you have everything set up and like your categories and all that, then essentially it's just about coming online like every two to four weeks or something and just sort of checking and maybe like recategorizing something and just sort of, you know, essentially double checking your software and that's it. Like I usually come on honestly like once a month right before I do my sales and use taxes and just go through, you know, all of my expenses and income for the last month. It usually takes, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes to kind of check it against my bank account and check it against, you know, my PayPal and my Squarespace and that kind of stuff. I like to double check things just to make sure everything integrated. But honestly, even with double checking everything, like I spend less than an hour on it every month. Even if you're not yet at the point of paying taxes and you're just doing your bookkeeping just for yourself at this point, or because you're making such small income that it's just not quite worth it to have to go through the whole government route yet, you definitely should at some point, but yet, then I would still advise you coming about every two to four weeks to double check your accounting software, just because you wanna make sure that any purchases or whatever are still kind of fresh in your mind. Like I get a lot of art supplies like on eBay or Amazon, stuff like that. It doesn't tell you what it is, right? So if I don't remember what it is, I'm gonna be like, wait, was that an art supply or was that like, you know, an office supply or did that wind up being something like, I wouldn't buy it on that credit card if it wasn't a business expense. So I know it's a business expense, but maybe I don't exactly remember which category it goes on. So anyways, 
this is just good advice. You should go on it no less than once a month and just kind of double check things and live a little check, 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 move, 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 do whatever you need to do and bam, you're organized and you're done. And I just want to reiterate again, like I just mentioned, I always double check all my accounting software and I really honestly recommend that you do that because every once in a while something has happened where like a connection has been down and like maybe, you know, my credit card wasn't attached for two weeks or something and so none of the transactions went through even though once you reaccount them at least with Wave, it'll bring in your last transactions. But anyways, things can go wrong. So it's not a bad idea. Like I said, I just pull up my accounting software, I'll pull up my bank account, I'll pull up like the two or three avenues where I am able to take money in and then I just double check my sales and my expenses against my wave accounting software. And it's super easy. It doesn't take any time. Like literally it's just checking numbers. Oop, that number's there, 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 that number's there. And that's all you do. <laughs> And the beauty of it is that if you keep up with it just like 30, 45 minutes every month, then at the very end of the year when it is time to do your taxes, everything is just there, organized for you. Like it makes it so easy. I cannot even express this enough. Like it's just so simple. Like you can just look on and say, oh, I spent this much on gas getting to and from art shows. I spent this much on art supplies. I spent, you know, this much on, you know, my internet to be able to post them. Like it's just, everything is just right there at the end of the year. And then when you go to do your taxes, you're just like, this is my expense and this is how much it cost me. And this is my expense and this is how much it cost me. And this is like, I can't even tell you guys, I can't even express to you how worth it it is at the end of the year if you just stay organized. Great, now that you've kind of got that into your brain and you've sort of figuring out, okay, this is how I'm gonna set things up, go ahead and check out this video right here. This is how to do your taxes as an artist. Like I said, even if you're not quite ready this year, it's a really good idea just to kind of have these things in your brain, right? So that you know what to expect and how you're gonna wanna organize things. Thanks so much for being here, guys. I hope you learned a ton and you're ready to go conquer your bookkeeping. Check out this video and I'll see you next time.